In this video, I'm going to present you the paper Generating Images from Caption and Vice Versa via Clip Guided Generative Latin Space Search. First, we are going to do a brief introduction on the generative architecture using the paper and on OpenEyes Clip. Then, we are going to see how the text to image and image to text tasks work in this framework. And lastly, we are going to see some results. A generative network is a network that takes some inputs from a space called latent space here indicated with the letter Z, and generates a realistic output in a target space. Generative adversarial networks, or GANs, are a framework to train a generative network. GANs use a dataset of real samples, in this case images, and an additional network called discriminator. The discriminator is a classifier trained to distinguish between real images and images generated from the generative network. As you can see in this step, only the discriminator is trained. The generative network is instead trained to generate images that make the discriminator classify them as real. As you can see in this step, only the generator is trained. The training process ends when the generator is able to generate images that are indistinguishable from the real ones, at least from the discriminator point of view. The Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 2 is a generative architecture for texts. It accepts as input some tokens, here showed as the outputs of the binary pair encoder BPE, and outputs the probability distribution of the next token. During the training, it is fed with the previous tokens, here we are using just the very first, and it is trained to maximize the correct probability of the next one. This training process is repeated using all the available tokens. This pre-training technique is called causal language modeling. To generate text, we can use the initial token as Latin space and select as next token the one with the highest probability. We can then add the predicted token to the input once and keep generating new tokens until this top token is produced or a maximum sentence length is reached. OpenAI released Clip early this year. To do the contrastive language image pre-train, OpenAI's team scraped the internet to build a massive dataset of images and text pairs. Clip is composed by two encoders a transformers-based text encoder and a convolutional neural network-based image encoder. Both encoders encode the inputs in a space of the same size. Here I am indicating with T0, T1 and so on the encodings of the text inputs and with I0, I1 and so on the encodings of the image inputs. If we compute the outer protocol of those vectors, we obtain a matrix in which each element is a distance between the encodings of every possible pair of training samples. Considering an associated pair of training samples, in this example image2 and text2, and interpreting the matrix elements as probability logits, we can define two classification tasks. One consists in classifying the text with the corresponding image, and the other in classifying the image with the corresponding text. This training process creates two encoders that encodes images and text that contain similar concepts into similar vectors. In our proposed framework, Clip Glass, for the text to image task, we use a target text, an image generative architecture, and Clip's encoders. We firstly compute the embeddings of the target text using the text encoder. Then, given a Z, we compute the similarity between the embeddings of the generated image and the ones from the target text. We also compute the discriminator output of the image. Our objective is then to maximize the similarity between those embeddings and classify the image as real. We have used a multi-objective genetic algorithm to find the Z that fulfill those objectives. We then use the pseudo-weights technique to select the most realistic solution according to the discriminator. We have also carried out the optimization without the discriminator and using a single objective genetic algorithm to assess its importance. In the same way, for the image-to-text task, given a target image and a text-generative architecture, in this case GPT-2, 
and clips encoders, we have used a genetic algorithm to find the Z that generate the text which embeddings are most similar to the ones of the target image. For the text-to-image task, we have used four generative networks. StyleGAN2 Face, trained on generating human faces, StyleGAN2 Car, trained on generating cars, StyleGAN2 Church, trained on generating churches, and BigGAN, trained on the ImageNet dataset. For the image-to-text task, we have used the GPT-2 text generator, and we selected some random target images from the ImageNet dataset. These are the results for the domain-specific target text using StyleGAN2 face. As you can see, ClipGlass is able to generate images that correctly match the target caption. These are the results for the domain-specific target text using StyleGAN2 car. Even in this case, ClipGlass is able to generate the corresponding images, even if some artifacts are present. These are the results for the domain-specific target text using StyleGAN2 Church. Here you can see some watermark artifacts caused by the dataset used to train the generative network. These are the results for the general target text using BigGun. The images resemble the target text, but major visual artifacts are present in this case. Here you can see that when using the target text, the face of a blonde girl with glasses, only the domain-specific gun is able to generate the correct image. When using as target text a blue car in the snow, only StyleGAN2 car is able to generate the requested image. Interesting, StyleGAN2 church without discriminator is also able to generate a blue car in front of a church. In the same way, when using as target text a gothic church in the city, only StyleGAN2 church is able to generate the correct image. Some gothic artifacts are also present in StyleGAN2 phase without discriminator. These are the results for the image-to-text task. As you can see, for this target image, ClipGlass is able to generate the correct caption. For this set of images, Clip Glass generated meaningful captions that are factually wrong. For this last set of images, Clip Glass generated some weird captions that are somehow correct. Thanks for watching. The source code of Clip Glass and an online demo are available at this link.